you are welcome 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 to our bible study i'm excited to bring the teaching of god to you and it is my prayer as always that you will walk in the will of god for your life you will begin to hear god you will develop intimacy with him in such a way that daily as you live you will be able to showcase his call upon your life to reconcile other people back to himself to god today by the grace of god we will continue in our series the modern church why you may have to change your church or maintain your church this is important because there is a lot of confusion about the purpose for having a place of worship and i want to remind you that in the old testament there was no such thing as a church they have synagogues they have temple and we're gonna see more about this as we study today even as you take as i take you through the establishment of the church in corinth I'll be able to see more about the need for us to embrace the doctrine of the apostles which is the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ the fullness of his ministry while he was here and what we should anticipate for as believers let us pray Heavenly Father I want to thank you for the grace that I have to bring this teaching to your people I pray Lord Jesus that you do it teach them through me take over my vocal cord and speak expressly to their minds so that they will be able to appropriate this teaching daily mm, even as they walk with you in the name of Jesus in Jesus Christ's name I have prayed amen 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 let us go to the scripture quickly uh, the book of Acts of the Apostles chapter 2 verse 1 the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place when Jesus Christ was here on earth he was operating in the ministry of uh, repentance and reconciliation in other words, it was preaching also just as John the Baptist was preaching. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. In fact, they started telling them that the kingdom of God is with them. In other words, for the fulfillment of the work of reconciliation, there must be fullness of repentance. People must repent of their sins to appropriate the need to reconcile to God. Without repentance, there can be reconciliation. So Jesus came to help us establish that connection. The fullness of our repentance is wrapped in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. He made a promise to them that for them to effectively continue to carry out the work of reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation, presenting sinners, presenting unbelievers, to God they need supernatural power they need the Spirit of God they need divine empowerment while Jesus was with them it was full with Holy Ghost and with power so he was operating in the totality of God as he was constantly in communication with the Father and the Spirit of God was leading him to bring to fulfillment the completeness of the work of repentance and the presentation of reconciliation however the disciples could not operate in this dimension without the empowerment of the spirit because the spirit of god is the author of instruction is the giver of instruction is the one that will lead believers in this new dispensation to continue to walk in the ministry of reconciliation now 
The Bible says in verse 2, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, that was when Jesus Christ ascended to heaven, and he gave the promise to them in chapter 1, um, for, for John truly, chapter 1 verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So he told them in anticipation that it is not for them to know the times of the season which the Father had put in his own power, but they will receive this power after the Holy Spirit come upon them, and they will continue to witness both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the, of the earth. Our ability to witness is wrapped in the empowerment of the spirit i mentioned before that it is not going to be my teaching it's not going to be by my preaching that is going to reconcile people to god it is going to be by the ministry of the holy spirit by divine touch of the spirit i can facilitate it i can teach um, in a manner that the spirit of god will help me to touch your heart for transformation and then the Spirit of God will convince you of your iniquities and your atrocities and then bring you to the knowledge of God. The same with you, new dispensation believer, a child of God. It is not going to be by your strength. It's not going to be by your effort that people will get um, saved through you. It is going to be by the power of God, by the Spirit of God, because the... Spirit of God will lead you to the right people whose heart are ready to receive the message of reconciliation. All right, it doesn't mean that we should not do our part. It doesn't mean that I should not continue to teach. It doesn't mean I should not continue to preach. I should continue to preach the message of repentance, but I don't have power to make you repent. It's the Spirit of God that will give you the power of enablement to do so. Now, why is it important for us to continue in the doctrine of the apostles? It is important for us to continue in the doctrine of the apostles because that is where we will get our strength. That is where readiness for persecution comes from. Unfortunately, we are not preparing ourselves for the end time events as the church. Uh, the love of many is going to grow cold if people are not fully persuaded about the things of Christ. In love of many, we we will not be so strong when persecution comes if they are not um, ready through the doctrine of the apostles. Now, the Bible says in Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. We will likely see fellowship. is quite obvious. And when you go to church, they fellowship together. They do things together um, in breaking of bread. Interpretation could be only communion, it could be just having dinner together. And in prayers, well, in some churches today they pray, but maybe a little bit, not so much. And then we no longer talk about the Apostles' Doctrine. You're talking about philosophy of men, talking about principles of the world, talking about financial breakthrough, talking about what other things effective leadership and things like that well those things have their place in developing us but the church of god should be a place where we constantly talk about our lord jesus christ because that's the apostles doctrine not the doctrine of denomination most of the doctrinal beliefs are also from the scripture but the only doctrine the true doctrine that we must constantly talk about is the doctrine of the apostles which is the doctrine of our lord jesus christ now 
I'm going to take you through the scripture to see how this doctrine is very important in propagation and in kingdom advancement. Let's take a look at the book of Acts, book of Acts chapter 7. Book of Acts, I talked a little bit about this passage, um, you know, to give us background story about the life of Stephen. So let's take a look at Stephen's approach to the council of elders. Then said the high priest, uh, these things so. What things? Because Stephen was brought before the council. The Bible says it was full of faith and prayer. He did great wonders and miracles among the people. So then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Labitans, the Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. So there was argument here in verse 9 of chapter 6. The Bible says, And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. That is what you're going to see. Um, if you see, if you're in the church of God and the minister is, you know, preaching effectively according to the leading of the Holy Spirit, they will not be able to resist it. They will know for sure it's the truth. But because they don't want the truth to stand, there will be persecution against the truth. Even the church of God and everything seems to be, everything, uh, people are very happy, excited about the teaching of the pastor. Mm, maybe the pastor is appealing to their emotions. I think the message of God, the genuine teaching of the apostle should steer up hmm, some form of discomfort in the heart of men to repent or to operate in the fullness of their call. The Bible says they could not resist this. And then the stubborn man which said, we have heard them speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. <laughs> you see, their fight really was uh, about Moses also. How will you talk about apostles' doctrine and you're not talking about Moses? You're not talking about Elijah, Elisha, you're talking about something crazy. So you're speaking against Moses, the one that brought us from Egypt to Israel, to, to Canaan land. What are you talking about? The Bible says in verse 12, And they stirred up the people, and the elders, and the scribes, and came upon him, and caught him, and brought him to the council. And set up, now pay attention here, the Bible says, and set up false witnesses. <laughs> uh, I put here in my Bible, and this was 2019, November 13, at 7, 10 p.m. I put in my Bible, when there is too much freedom, people don't fight the real enemy anymore. They start fighting each other. This was November 13, 2019, 7, 10 p.m. I put in my Bible here. I think that was a revelation I got from there. I will, I will read that to you. The Bible says, and set of false witnesses, which said, This man ceased not to speak blasphemous word, words against this holy place and the law. This holy place, the temple and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us, and all that sat in the council looking steadfastly on him saw his face as he had been the face of an angel. You see, the Mosaic doctrine is not going to attract much opposition. The reason is because Mosaic doctrine is... Um, obeying the law and fulfilling the law which we know that everyone is guilty of that so if you talk about it well they'll probably look at it what are you talking about we know you we know what you've done we know you know how you lived your life in the past there won't be much opposition it's a leveler mosaic law is a leveler so everybody so if you're not telling likes you're committing adultery you're bearing false witness against your neighbors so many things you know, so it's a leveler. It won't probably attract so much opposition. 
What about the law? It's so numerous to count. We can't fulfill everything. So even when the pastor is preaching about the law, he's going to say, well, you know, we can't really fulfill all of this. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to help us to do it. <laughs> You know, I'm not saying I'm perfect myself. That's usually the language. So everybody is okay. It's okay. It's kind of acceptable. So mostly Mosaic law, um, the fulfillment of the law, uh, I mean the oppression of the law, the major and minor prophets will not attract much opposition. But when you really talk about the doctrine of the apostles, when you talk about Jesus Christ, being the son of God, being uh, the redeemer of our soul, that would be opposition. So in this case, that was the offense of Dickens Stephen. Now, let's see the address of Stephen before the council in, verse, in chapter 7. Then said the high priest, that this thing so, and he said, men, brethren, and fathers, our king, the God of glory, appeared unto our father Abraham, which was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charan, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show thee. And then he came out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Charan, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him from into his land where he ye now dwell. He brought them from the known to the current reality. So was talking to them about the fulfillment of the promise wrapped around the life of Abraham till the time where Jacob went down into Egypt and died and their forefathers till another king arose which knew not Joseph and then in the time of Moses when Moses was born it described how he was after three months he was brought to Egypt how Moses learned all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deed. And when he was full 40 years old, it came into the heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. I was describing this to them in verse 30 that, and when 40 years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai, Sina, an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire and the burning bush. So he was telling them all this wonderful amazing things that happened before the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, in verse 45, which also our fathers that came after brought in with Jesus into the possession of the Gentiles, whom God drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before God and desired to find a tabernacle for the God of Jacob, but Solomon built him an house, albeit the most I dwelleth not in the temples made with hands, as yet the prophet. Now, he was telling them that the building is not as important as the transformative power of the redemption that Jesus Christ brought to us. In verse 49, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me? Seeth the Lord, or what is the place of my rest? Had not my hand made all these things? Ye stiff naked and uncircumcised in art, and yes, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your father persecuted, and they have slain them which shield before? of the coming of just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by disposition of angels, and have not kept it. Now you see, that was the offense of Stephen. He was nailing everything to them from the beginning till the current time was talking to them. And then, his life was really short, if you look at it very well. The Bible says in verse 55, But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of God, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord. 
and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet whose name was Saul. Apostle, Apostle Paul, who used to be Saul, was right there. Uh, became the father of uh, apostleship now. We, we, we're not talking about him a lot. So the presentation of the King Stephen about the full redemption of our Lord Jesus Christ that we have in chapter 7. So we saw how his life was transformed but that is not the subject for today. Uh, what is important for you today is that the disciples started operating in the ministry that Jesus Christ commissioned them, which is to preach the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ according to what was recorded in the book of Matthew. Now let us go there because it's important for the modern church that we are talking about Matthew 28 verse 18 to 20 and Jesus came and said unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and earth go ye therefore and teach all nations now I'm reading King James version baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you again there is nothing else we should talk about or do in the church of God if it is not around our Lord Jesus Christ all right Whatever it is that, you know, activities, whatever it is, if Jesus is out of the picture, we are not operating in the fullness of God's call for our lives. If we are not teaching the people, if we are not teaching all nations, if we are not baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, if you are not teaching them to observe all things whatsoever that he commanded us to do, we are not having a church. Again, church is the collection of the redeemed of the Lord to operate in the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is, to bring people to the fullness of who Christ himself is and nothing else. Now, let's take a look about the, the church in Thessalonica. The church in Thessalonica. Or maybe before then, we, we should just talk about the church in Antioch. The church in Antioch quickly. Uh, in Acts chapter 11 how they send relief to Jerusalem but let's take a look quickly at the church at Antioch the reason is because this was the time that we first have the account of being a child of God being a Christian now now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, you know, we're reading about the persecution of Stephen, they had to leave so that the Jews, the Gentiles can hear the message of God, just as Jesus Christ commanded, go ye unto all nations. All right. The persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Act 11, 20. Preaching the Lord Jesus. Not preaching about the Lord Jesus, but preaching the Lord Jesus. Just talking about him. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. I've talked to our members about this and I'm going to say to you that you cannot do anything for God without the consciousness of His presence. There is nothing you can accomplish for God without the consciousness of His presence. No wonder Jesus talked to them that, Hey, I'm not going to leave you nor forsake you. If you are in doubt of the presence of God, you cannot do anything for Him. And that is why the first thing first is to know Him, is to have intimacy with Him, is to be convinced in your spirit that is right there with you in the thing and thick of life. When trouble comes, He is right there. He is not going to leave you nor forsake you. When you misbehave, when you miss the mark, you must bring yourself back to the consciousness of God, of His presence. The Bible says that, and the hand of the Lord was with them. Countless examples in the scripture, we see that it is the understanding of God's presence that make people to do the best for God. It is in communion, it is in intimacy with Him, knowing that He's right there, speaking to them daily, talking to them about their decisions, about their actions that allowed them to operate in his mission for their lives. And don't forget, when it comes to God, there is a sense of individualism. God is interested first about your life, before your spouse, before your kids, before your church, before your job, before your nation, before anything. His interest really is first about you. He called Abraham. He made him father of nations. First, he's going to start with you. The same thing with church of God. It has to start with the man. It has to start with the pastor. The pastor must come to the full understanding of God's instruction for him, for his life. And that instruction is, uh, is transferable to the people. Right? So it has to be first an individualistic approach. God is calling the person and the person is presenting the ministry, the work that God has commissioned him to accomplish and where God is leading him to lead the people. The Bible says that the hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord, not turned unto the pastor, turned unto the Lord. A lot of you are missing out in the mission and the purpose of God for your lives because you are looking up to the pastor. You're thinking pastor is going to be the one to solve your problem, whereas you must turn to God. And that is why when you are not showing up in church, you think pastor is going to be the one that is going to get mad. Of course, pastor will feel disappointed, but the reality of it is that you, have drift, you are drifting away from your consciousness of God's presence. All right. Having collective fellowship is a reinforcer of God's presence. With or without physical appearing in physical building, with or without, you can still be conscious of the presence of God. But when you come for collective intimacy, collective fellowship, you bring yourself to the consciousness of the presence of God. Of course, it depends on where the environment is the apostle doctrine being preached if the apostle doctrine is not being preached you won't become conscious of the indwelling presence of god if jesus christ is not being talked about you're not going to become conscious of the presence of god you will just do activities pay your type pay your offering sing praises do whatever you want to do and go back home nothing is changing about your life because nobody is talking about the transformative power of god that comes from intimacy with our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that a lot of them believed. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. Now we're seeing the expansion. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch, who when he came and had seen the grace of God was glad and exalted them all, that with purpose of art they would 
cleave unto the Lord. They would cleave unto the Lord. The Bible says, For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. The only kingdom principle for church expansion is continuous preaching, continuous teaching of the apostles' doctrine, not the work of miracles. If his work of miracles, people would be half baked. It must be discipleship. It must be a sense of people coming to the understanding of the work of our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of people was added unto the Lord, unto the Lord, not unto the church. The same we have when the apostles in book of Acts chapter 2 verse 40, um, verse 42 downward. The Bible says a lot were added to them, you know, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. But before then, verse 41, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls, not counting women and children. Men! <laughs> now we are seeing the opposite in the church. If we, if we have to take attendance, probably not going to see a lot of men there gonna have women and children mostly because the children will follow their mother wherever their mother um, is going but men not so much not so much but the Bible says a lot of work were added unto the church and 3,000 men were added to the church it's not for Today's teaching is not about men, but my encouragement will be to men that they have to start establishing their relationship with God so that we will have a vibrant church. And we have a vibrant church. I'm not talking about men that are full of activities in the church. They won't even listen. They are totally disengaged from the things of God. They are just there because they have to be there. Don't be in the presence of God because you have to. It is a, it's a, it's a sense of, uh, of being a child. You are not clear about God. When you have complete clarity of who He is, it's not going to be about being there. It's going to be much more than let's just go there. It's going to be, there will be great anticipation in your spirit. You want to fellowship with your heavenly father. You cannot be a true father without your heavenly father. The Bible says that then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Teaching again. Taught much people. And the disciples were called Christian first. In Antioch. This is where I'm going. When you're in a church, we have to see that there is something about you that can really say that you are part of that church. You know, your life, the strength of your character, your behavior, the things you are you agree to, you disagree with, we must see it. We should be able to say that I know this person is a member of the Fountain of Hope Church. They know our members are aware of this. So there must be something peculiar about you that will make people to recognize you as a true disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't come by just going to church. It comes by teaching. It comes by the transformative power in knowing what the Apostles' Doctrine is all about. And then we'll be able to say, well, truly, truly, this is the church of a living God. And this person is a Christian. If you ask a common person here in our society, you know, what's your religion? They say, well, I'm a Christian. 
not just about saying it. Yeah. Have you been to a place where you are properly trained to be a Christian? You know, being a Christian is not is not a casual identity. It's a symbol. It's a symbol of graduation. It's something that we say that even this person, you know, must have been in in the school of discipleship. Of course, your credential will not be meaningful if you don't go through things, the practicality of it. So there must be something that will say, yes, uh -huh, no, I'm a better Christian now. And uh, you, I've gone through fire, I've passed through water, but yet I am still standing. They're in a church and they are not teaching. They are not uh, teaching you about the things of God. I don't know if you're in, the ch in a church. I'll probably say you're in a... Just some form of gathering, but we should not call it church if they are not talking about the doctrine of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, King of Glory, I want to thank you for the grace I have to bring this teaching to your people. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you will order their steps, you will order their stops in the name of Jesus. They will hear you clearly. Holy Spirit, you will teach them effectively beyond my words, beyond my teaching. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus Christ's name, I have prayed. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for being part of our Bible study. Don't forget, if you are yet to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe so that we can continue to grow together in the knowledge of God's will for our lives. Thank you so much. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you again next time.